In high school, I recall entire roast sessions in which participants would jokingly insult each other in the most creative way they knew how. It wasn't until I got older and began reading scholarly material that I realized that this was actually considered a cultural phenomenon and was seen as being unique to the Afro-American community. The older generation tended to call it the dozens, while my generation referred to it by many different names depending on where you were from, but little did we all know that this likely came from Africa. <laughs> What up African world, it's Home Team here, and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. And with a word from my sponsors, there's a new social media platform dedicated to educating and uplifting our people. No longer do we have to be censored for speaking our truth. Our Black Truth is black owned and operated and a place where you can post your businesses and even monetize your content. You can visit the website at OurBlackTruth.com. Links to everything in the description box below. To begin, I've touched on this topic before and thought it was worthy of a remake. This video is going to be mostly opinion based, coupled with one scholar's theory on its origin. Even though there are multiple theories as to where the dozens came from, I thought the African based theory provides the most compelling answers. If you guys are interested in the other theories concerning the origin of the dozens, be sure to stick around until the end for sources. As an Afro descended individual, I thought this topic was important because I think the dozens are one of the most interesting things we likely inherited from our ancestors. As Afro descended people, it's sometimes difficult to prove we do something instinctively because our ancestors did it. As a people, we may feel or know that genetic or cultural memory, if you will, influences us daily, but explaining that to someone would be complicated. And that's why I think the history of the dozens and its clear parallels with African culture can be so significant for our community. For those of you who may not know, the dozens have been defined as a contest game in which two contestants in the presence of a spurring audience of peers try to best each other in casting aspersions on each other or each other's relatives, particularly the mother. Such aspersions are made up of both non-sexual and sexual remarks, such as joking accusations of incest, promiscuity, and possession of unusual sexual or related organs. Now this is just a general guideline to help people identify when the dozens are taking place. In reality, there is no announcement that this contest is happening or that it relates specifically with anything sexual, thus making it official. As mentioned before, the dozens have been called by many different names. I find it fascinating that the social activity that I've observed and participated in so naturally has been studied. I imagine some of you guys can identify. I think it's important that we have a place to document this from our experience and understanding. So in the comment section below, feel free to do so, as your input would be just as valuable. I'm sure there are many in the diaspora who never really thought that what we were participating in was not only something unique, but more importantly came directly from our ancestors. In my view, the most compelling theory concerning the origin of the dozens concerns the African origin theory. The other two previous theories that have less weight in my personal opinion are the independent invention theory and the Western European influence theory. I think Dr. Amuzi Chmezi does a great job at highlighting why those older theories hold little to no weight in the discussion. One of the principal reasons why the African origin theory of the dozens makes the most sense is because the concept of the dozens was and still is performed on the continent. Among the Igbos of Nigeria, a game strikingly similar, almost identical to the dozens, is played by children, adolescents, and teenagers. It is usually played at night, after supper, under moonlight, and in the presence of parents, siblings, and other adults and relatives. The aspersions, or invectives, are usually fancied. Actual deformities are rarely used. The game is called Ikocha Inkocha, which means making disparaging remarks. 
Ikocha in Kocha is found not only among the Igbos of Nigeria but also in other African societies including Ghana. In Ghana, as in Nigeria, the game is traditionally an after supper moonlight engagement. But unlike many Igbos, Ghanaian players often allow the leveling of aspersions on the contestants' parents and other relatives. In view of the fact of the existence of the dozens in Africa, previous theoretical writings on the Afro-American dozens need to be re-examined. For whatever reason, all the previous writings on the dozens have played down or outright ignored the possibility of an African origin. Thankfully, modern scholars are becoming more aware of the racial biases of the past and revisiting these ideas, and so the African origin of the dozens became much more plausible. Some of the most glaring similarities between the dozens and Ikocha Inkocha are pointed out by Dr. Chemezi. Both the Igbo and the Afro-American types allow only two contestants at a time, utilize a spurring audience, base aspersions mostly on fancied rather than actual defects, conditions, or events, and may be played between friends and siblings by both boys and girls. I wanted to add to Dr. Chemezi's observation, although the dozens was based mostly on fanciful insults, other similar roasting sessions use real physical characteristics as a sort of trump card, or they at least exaggerated these characteristics to get the most response from the audience. One of the differences between the dozens amongst Afro-Americans and the Ikocha Inkocha of the Igbo seems to be the heavy presence of sexual jokes or insults. That may have developed independently in the Afro-American version. The dozens, according to Dr. Chemezi, likely originated in and was carried over from Africa, but not necessarily in its original form. Another difference is the reference to relatives, which dominates the Afro-American dozens, but does not characterize the illustrative example taken from the Igbo variety of the African dozens. In Ghana, however, relatives are frequently made the targets of the aspersions. Since the ancestors of Afro-Americans came from different sections of Africa, it is possible that they brought with them different varieties of the African dozens. The use of rhymes in the Afro-American variety of the game is also a distinguishing factor from its African counterpart. One possible offshoot of the dozens can be battle rap, a more intense and official form of the concept, but that's another topic for another day. It's critical to understand that Afro-descended people in the Americas are an amalgamation of various African ethnic groups, largely from West and Central Africa, and so it would only make sense that the dozens will have several differences from any one particular African ethnic group, but share similarities with many, a clear reflection of history. Certain ethnic groups from Ghana and Nigeria were not the only Africans who participated in the dozens. In fact, there was even an African empire further north that seemingly legitimized the dozens and made it law. The Mali Empire had a constitution known as the Korokan Foga. The Korokan Foga was instituted after the Battle of Karina in the 13th century, which founded the state of Mali. In it, the Mandinka said the following. It has been established among the Mandinkas, the Sanankunya joking relationship. Consequently, any contention that occurs among these groups should not get out of hand, respect for one another being the rule. Between brothers-in-law and sisters-in-law, between grandparents and grandchildren, tolerance should be the principle. A modern interpretation of the Mandinka Sanankunya would most closely fit what we would call the dozens. The Mandinka essentially advanced the idea that the dozens or joking relationship should be tolerated. It's clear that the dozens was deeply embedded in Mandinka culture since they took the time to institute it. This means it has a greater meaning for the Mandinka people and likely other African groups as well. Senan Kunya is a long-standing West African social tradition where playful banter should be exchanged and was seen here as a civic duty. The main aim appears to be promotion of tolerance and solidarity. No matter what it's called, whether it's the dozens, Jonin, Roastin, Sanan Kunya, Ikocha Inkocha, 
it's obvious that they're all related culturally to an African way of being. I think it's absolutely incredible that we not only have evidence of an African origin for the dozens observed in everyday African culture, but we also see it being recognized, sanctioned, and even encouraged in an African empire. This is significant because as mentioned before, it reveals just how valuable it was for African society and how it was used as a tool in promoting togetherness. Admittedly, I identify in full with this African philosophical approach because I observed and participated in the dozens with not only friends but acquaintances in which there was mutual respect. For me, understanding the African reasoning behind the dozens adds a powerful layer that I never would have been aware of. In other words, knowing this history gives the dozens a purpose outside of adolescent entertainment. I understand and identify with this African approach because I most certainly felt closer to or connected with people I did the dozens with. This is not to say that some of us in the African diaspora didn't have a bad experience with the dozens or that feelings of togetherness was always a theme. However, I think we can appreciate the African social theory behind it and its intent from an African perspective. Now, of course, I know all of this is under the assumption that Sanan Kunya and the dozens are indeed the same thing. Although it's difficult to satisfactorily prove, the evidence seems to not be without merit. The African origin theory gives a greater purpose to the dozens that cannot be articulated by the other theories, and it may be one of the reasons why it survived the Middle Passage, because it doesn't seem to be a phenomenon steeped in entertainment or a product of escapism. It was designed to bring unity between families and a way to connect with individuals who may be different from yourself within the community or state. I can only imagine the need for enslaved Africans and their descendants to preserve this cultural mechanism, whether consciously or subconsciously. This is the reason, among many others, why the African origin theory for the dozens holds the most weight. I think Dr. Chemezi puts it best. Why Afro-Americans engage in this game and what it does for them have been the object of theoretical speculation for previous writers on the topic. Failure to look to Africa for interpretive constructs and a preoccupation with what the writers have perceived as the pathologies of the Afro-American culture have resulted in untenable and oftentimes downright ridiculous theoretical products. Well, I'm all out, guys. Let me know your thoughts below about your experience with the dozens and what you think the most likely origin of it is. And if you like these videos and want to contribute to its continued development, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.